What's up, Nature Freaks? What's going on, guys? Dave and Jerry back again for another Saturday. Stop in a fix. Yep, and today is our fourth episode in our five-part series of Epic Venomous Encounters. And today we're going to be focused on our international epic encounters. We're going to be talking about Singapore. Singapore. Yeah, we're going to be mentioning the King Cobra, epicness, the mangrove cat-eyed snake, and also the mangrove pit viper. Yep, so let's do it. All right, so we're gonna start off with, of course, the king of all snakes, the most epic snake on this planet, the king cobra. This is how it went down. We're in Singapore, we had met up with some locals previously, we were all out herping together, but this morning, me and Dave met Lou Boyer like 5.30 a.m. because we hate ourselves, and we were looking for blue coral snakes, which Lou Struck promised out. us we were gonna find. Struck that out. didn't happen, yeah. So we were leaving the area, uh, tired, hungry, no coffee, and we're like, bummer. But then we got an amazing phone call. Yeah, we got a call from some of the local herpers that we were herping with earlier in the week, and they had told us that they had found a baby king cobra. So, of course, we were super excited. It didn't matter that we didn't find it. We were going to photograph a king cobra. So, we got to the scene, and when we arrived, there was a little baby, and he was hooded. Mm. And he was still probably, what, about a foot and a half off the ground, would you say? Yeah, probably about a foot. Even at that size, that is a very dangerous snake. You have to be extremely careful not to get bit by that snake. Doesn't matter that it's not 18 feet long, which these are the longest venomous snakes in the world. Even a baby can take you out. And that snake didn't know it wasn't 18 foot tall. It had the yeah. attitude of an 18 foot long <laughs> snake. Um, I think it's 80 foot tall, that's funny. But yeah, I mean, it would it would hood, it would come at you. It was like, back up, I know what I'm packing in these fangs. And um, what's really incredible is when they called us, um, the snake was in the tree. They spotted it in a tree. Actually, uh, Gabrielle did, the only girl in that group with the awesome laser beam eyes, saw that snake in the tree. By the time we got there, it was on the ground and just, it was showing off. And it really, it, it wasn't like backing down, didn't try to leave. Um, so we weren't far away. Fortunately, we got to photograph that thing, take some epic video, and check off bucket list. Yeah, King and Cobra. that is, I mean, it's gotta be on every Herper's bucket list. That is an iconic snake. It's probably the most famous snake in the world. When you, when you ask any kid, you know, what's your favorite snake? And a lot of times they're gonna say King Cobra. And even as adults, I mean, we were like little kids when we saw yeah. that. How many animals have the king attached to them? We have the king snakes here in the U.S. and they eat other snakes, but still, they don't compare to Ophiophagus hana. That is like the bomb diggity. Everybody knows what that snake looks like. All right, so moving on to the second one. This is probably a more of an epic story. I would line. More crazy. Yeah, that. more crazy, fun. This is like the exciting how you find and, and get a snake, but it's just not maybe <clears throat> as epic of a snake. So we're gonna move on to the mangrove canine snake. Yeah, one of the most beautiful snakes that you'll find in- Yeah, this is a snake that I've been wanting to see since I was a kid. I don't know why, just the boy got, I don't know, I've always loved this snake, that the black and yellow. Yeah, the sheen. Say, if you don't know what it looks like, it's just got the- Yeah, it's right here on my shirt. Oh, I didn't even know it was on your shirt. That yeah. is funny, he's even got his mouth open. The mouth open, which is typical. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of reminds me of the actual <laughs> yeah, snake the that we found. Right. It's not happy. So, yeah. Check this out. You want to set the scene? Yeah, I'll set okay. the scene. So we met up with uh, two guys that uh, we know pretty well from Singapore who knew of an area that was restricted. We weren't even supposed to be in this area, but it was at night, nobody was around, kind of snuck in there. And uh, they had come across this mangrove cat snake. Um, it kind of was a resident snake. It lived out there, mm -hmm. they have a territory, and they, f they found it numerous times. So we kind of just took a chance that it would be there. We walked. Pretty far, wouldn't yeah, you say? Yeah, good hike. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, when we got there, it was a beautiful scene. There was a waterfall, there was a lagoon, and sure enough, sitting up on this branch above the water was a huge, I would say at least six, seven feet. I and mean, wouldn't you say? Yeah, you said branch, but it was actually, I mean, like, picture like a tropical paradise almost in the middle of this jungle. Like you mentioned the waterfall into the lagoon, but huge palm fronds, like 10 foot long palm fronds yep. um, at the top and then you kind of drop down to the lagoon and there was there was the snake just we hit it with a light yeah and, but there was there was a problem and then it just glows well the problem was it was 15 feet 15 off the feet ground. and that was above the, the water. water over water yeah. so yeah. 
So it was probably 20 feet off the ground because when you're in the water, obviously you're going to sink. So it was 15 feet above the water, 20 feet off the ground. We were faced with a huge problem. How are we going to photograph this snake, right? Yeah, so the solution was somebody, this is the smart solution, needs to go into the lagoon. I volunteered it. Which we have no idea what's in there because it's pitch black. So Just into the out. lagoon, <laughs> stand underneath the palm frond while someone pokes the snake with, I don't know, a piece of bamboo, let it hit the water. Grab that snake, wrangle it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not hit the water. You were supposed to catch this, it. Well, this was the, yeah. <laughs> that I was the, the catch the snake. The snake. <laughs> Which I don't know how you would have done that without getting Exactly. The, this plan was like going to fail from day one. So here I, I enter the lagoon, which they said was only about weight, I don't know, like thigh to waist deep. It wasn't. It had rained. Eventually, I'm up to my chest in water. So I got a snake hook. You know, I'm like, they're like, are you ready? I'm like, not yet. Here comes the snake, like totally not ready at all. Splashes next to me, disappears, and Dave's over here. Yeah, I was upset because this was a lifer species for us. We had never found one. And I just watched this beautiful six or seven foot mangrove cat snake fall into the water, go under and disappear. The water was murky, it was, it was dark. You couldn't see you with the flashlight. So yeah, everybody was pretty bummed. But well, we, I, weren't, we weren't going to leave without No, we weren't going to leave because we knew that snake had to come up for air. I was on the other side of Jeremy and I just kept scanning my light and all of a sudden I saw this head pop up out of the like water. Like on the opposite side of the lagoon. I screamed, there it is. And uh, Christian, which is one of the guys that we were with, and Jeremy, they, they made their way to the opposite side of the lagoon. Jeremy grabbed the snake. Now he's kind of talented. Well, luckily, yeah, I had my headlamp. And so I was able to kind of shine in the eye. The snake couldn't really. Yeah, see but it was approach. trying to jack you up, and you oh, were yeah. kind of using yeah. the gravity. Oh back yeah, to I, it. I had looked. <laughs> I hooked it with the one of the tail, and this is a big snake, and this thing was piss me, you know, trying to bite me. And so Christian is on the shore, and we had a pillowcase, and I don't know what he was doing with the pillowcase. So he had it pulled tight. And every time I'd go to put the snake in, it would just... Yeah, it was kind of know. comical watching him try to get this. It was like and, he had And Dave's over there him. trying to tell Christian, like, go to the bag! Yeah. And he's being coached on how to use a, a pillowcase. Finally, he lowered it and opened. Snake went right in. Booyah. Yep, we brought it up to an area it. away from the water, turned on the ground, and got awesome footage of the snake. So, mm -hmm. and if the We have zero footage of that whole interaction that we just spoke of because it didn't really happen if you ask anybody in Singapore. Okay, we're telling you now that it happened, but there's no proof, so. Yep, yep, and the snake was going through a shed, so it was probably not as beautiful as it should have been, but right. again, still beautiful in shed, so it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, and it, it was just, the whole night was a crazy night, but hey, we caught the snake, we got our photographs, and it was That's one of our most epic, and by the way, you guys, we're concentrating on venomous snakes. This is a rear fang venomous snake. Yeah, it is rear fang venomous. But people have had very um, serious reactions after getting bit. So I consider that somewhat of a dangerous snake depending on who's getting bit. <laughs> yeah, either way you want to avoid it. You don't want to figure out if you're going to react poorly in the middle of the jungle. That's right. So right. last but not least of this episode is the mangrove, mangrove pit, pit viper. viper. Yeah, so now this snake, if any snake looks evil, <laughs> this, this is a bad boy. And you know, we try to emphasize that these snakes are not evil or anything. Right, blah, blah, blah. But they have bright red eyes, they have this purplish brown. It's like the goth body. kid at high school, you know, they're like, maybe not actually evil, they just look scary. Yeah, and it does have the reputation of being a biter, so. Um, Fortunately, they live in the mangroves. They attach themselves, they coil up on mangrove roots where they hunt lizards and other uh, prey. And so people do not really interact with these snakes very often. You can't really walk by them and get bit because of where they hang out. And if you're not looking for them, you don't see them half the time. Because mm -hmm. of their coloration, they really blend in with the mangroves. Okay, so what makes this story epic is the fact that... Defiance. In Singapore, they constructed a fence along this mangrove where... Fence we, is a bit of a stretch. Yeah, it's more like, what would you say? Just wooden... But... Like a farm fence, kind of just wooden post. But that fence is there because a few years earlier, a woman was dragged into the water and eaten by a saltwater crocodile. So they constructed uh -huh. this... They constructed this... I don't know, I'm just going to call it a fence. Yeah. To prevent that from happening again. So However... The didn't come on the path. For us to see mangrove pit vipers, you kind of have to jump the fence, and that's a no-no. Um, yeah, because literally, like a pathway, 
uh, two wooden boards, and then you get the mangroves down right the into the mangrove swamp. You and know. we've seen huge, I mean, 15 foot saltwater crocodiles basking. They used know, to be in the main path before this fence. That's how close they would get. Right. So anyway, I had seen a huge mangrove pit, but the biggest one I've seen in the you know several trips that we've been to Singapore. And the only way to get good footage was to to jump this fence and film it. So <laughs> while I was doing that, Jeremy was the crocodile lookout. And I'm going to let you tell, tell them what happened. Yeah, so I'm looking for crocodiles, but I forgot to look out for the... Park rangers? Park, or I don't know what you call them. I'm just guy in a golf cart that likes to yell at you. But yeah, he pulled up and he was just like, oh, I mean, he was nice. He actually was just like, oh, you can't be over there. Crocodiles, it's dangerous. He wasn't really yelling at us. We're like, you know, of course we apologize. And we're like, totally get it. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. We'll be good. And then he left. No. Right back over the fence. Right back over the fence. <laughs> they never returned, so we got our footage. Kim, we got our pictures. I think we did that more than once, unfortunately. I mean, we try not to like get crazy and break a bunch of laws, but hey, I mean, you gotta get the job done. Yeah, and I, we weren't in any danger. I know no, we were no, pretty no, far no. away yeah. from the water, but Shit. What did you know, he had to do his job, we got it. But it was really cool. Um, again, I got super close to that uh, snake. We got awesome footage, and we also found a baby. Mm -hmm. Which was he was teeny tiny. tiny. Yeah, we got footage of that. Yep. Yep. And we did the same thing. We had to hop fence <laughs> to film the baby. But mm -hmm. all right, guys. Well, hey, I hope you enjoy that. That's our three epic venomous encounters from Singapore, Asia. Stay tuned because you're about to get episode number five, Costa Rica. Costa Rica, pura vida. All right. See ya. <laughs>